Hello, Afton. I'm Justine Pipitone. And I'm Evan Lynn. Today is November 25th, 2014, and we would like to welcome you to this week's Cougar News broadcast. Anna did a story on uh, Thanksgiving traditions. Let's check it. Here at Afton, we have a fairly diverse community. So I spoke to some student faculty to see how a few of these different cultures celebrated Thanksgiving. So how do you and your family celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, as far as uh, Filipinos culture, we don't really celebrate Thanksgiving. So we just follow the American culture. As far as, um, as my um, household goes, um, we cook American foods, but um, we do have a tradition where we cook two different turkeys. Um, my wife cook one that is baked and I cook one that I take outside and deep fry. And the rest of the family votes um, which turkey is the best and the looser they have to do the dishes. What food do you guys incorporate from your culture in Thanksgiving? Um, I actually get up early in the morning also and I start baking this uh, dessert called leche plant. It is a uh, caramel sauce filled custard that I have to start early in the morning like five o'clock in the morning. Um, but also my wife is Greek and she bakes uh, and she starts this a day before a dessert called baklava and those are the type of food that we bring in from our culture to celebrate our Thanksgiving meal. How does your family from Laos incorporate their culture into Thanksgiving? We typically use different foods than American people. Um, we have the turkey, mashed potatoes, stuff like that. But we also, you know, use different foods from our country. What type of foods do you guys cook on Thanksgiving? Um, usually they're spicy foods. I mean, you know, exotic, like papaya salad, rice, that kind of thing. Where are you guys both from? Mexico and Dominican Republic. How do you guys incorporate your culture into Thanksgiving? Um, well, me, my dad is the Dominican one, so this side, they do it like Americans, I would say, but they just add a little dash of Dominican <laughs> food in it, in there. And for me, um, we just have pretty much all traditional food except for a couple things. We add our Mexican side in with like uh, Mexican rice or Brussels sprouts and chorizo and for dinner or dessert we'll have like a tole which is like a homemade Mexican chocolate milk kind of thing. Well there you have it. Although these different cultures may celebrate Thanksgiving similar to tradition, they still find a way to incorporate their roots into their holiday festivities. Never forget where you came from. From Cougar News, this is Anna Warner signing out. Now I'm sure we've all heard about the six days of darkness. What's six days of darkness? You've never heard of the six days of darkness? <laughs> it's a good thing I did a story on it. Let's see it. Over the internet, there was a story regarding NASA's news about the six days of darkness passing over Earth in December. I spoke with students to see what they thought of the story and did some background and research on the story's validity. Have you heard about the six days of darkness? Yes, I heard about the six days of darkness. Yes, I saw a story about it on the internet. Do you believe that the six days of darkness is real? Um, I believe that it was fake because I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, that's usually normally fake. Uh, when I first saw it, I didn't really believe it. I read into it. I was a little convinced that it may happen, but overall, no, not really. Do you believe the six days of darkness could happen? Um, no, I feel that would be really hard for the world to go six days of darkness. <laughs> like, I don't think that's even possible. <laughs> I feel like they have enough technology and things to help that out. I believe there is a possibility that some kind of force could knock out technology in space, but I believe also that we would have a backup source for all of our energy needs and all that back here on Earth so there wouldn't be six complete days of darkness. After research, I discovered that the story was a hoax and not a real threat presented by NASA. Rest assured, Afton, you will have light this December. This has been Justine Pivotone with Cougar News. Hey Justine, I think my beard's filling in nice, right nice. <laughs>
compared to all the teachers doing No Shave November, no way. Sean did a story on it, so let's go see what he has to say. All right. Hey, Afton. You may be wondering what this contest for No Shave November is, so I went around and found out. It is a contest between six different teachers uh, to see who can grow the best uh, beard possible. And so what we're doing is, is we're having everybody buy tickets at a dollar a piece, or you can get seven for five dollars, and all proceeds are going to go to the Bully Fund. Um, what the tickets are designed for is a chance for students to win a prize uh, comparable to the money that we make. It'll be a gift certificate to iTunes or a local restaurant or maybe a Visa card, something that the students would be able to enjoy. Um, what the tickets are going to do is you're going to put it into the bucket of who you think will have the best beard by the end of November. And all this month, we are not shaving uh, to see who can be the best. And that's Mr. Kozak, myself, Mr. Hildebrand, Mr. Lau, Mr. Mittler, and Mr. Lubehusen. It is for, to raise money for uh, cancer awareness and specifically for Mr. Bowley's son, Thomas Bowley, to raise money uh, for his expenses. How is your No Shave November beard coming in? Well, as you can tell, I'm gearing up for next year. I, uh, I've got it coming in in certain areas, but not fully filling out, so I'm preparing for next year's. No shave in November. Well, it was itchy at first, but it's uh, it's not coming in too bad, so we're doing all right. Uh, my beard is coming in nicely. It's uh, I'm past the itchy stage. I've got a nice warm neck beard. It's nice when it's cold outside. It makes it a lot easier on me. Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. I think it's going in, coming in pretty nicely. What do you think? Sean Kenny, Cougar News. With Thanksgiving coming up, also means Black Friday. And Black Friday means crazy shoppers. Crazy shoppers means bad. Abby did a story on how to be safe. Hey Afton, for those of you going out on Black Friday, I decided to stop by the mall and talk to some of the stores. So first up is Champs. We all wear walkies so we can communicate nonstop. Um, we have we overstaff, so we have people in all corners of the store just to make sure. You know, no one's stealing, no one's getting in fights. I mean, we always try to deter from fighting. So for our Black Friday, we won't have any like coupons to bring in, um, but we have an entire new product launch. So an entire new um, stuff that you haven't seen like before Black Friday. It's gonna be out on the sales floor. And for that whole day, it's gonna be a discounted price. And that price will be on the actual tag. So you don't have to bring anything in. Um, we do have gift cards out right now. If, you're, if you spend 50, you get $10 gift card, which starts the 21st and goes through December 21st. So you can use that on Black Friday as well. This is Abby Hill with Cougar News signing off. Nice story, Abby. Hey, Evan, did you go to the Afton High School production of Little Bosnia? Yes, I did. Oh, well, for those of you who didn't, Randy Stringer did a recap of the play. Let's see it. Little Bosnia was this year's play. The dress rehearsal this year looked promising, and the matinee was great. I found some people part of the play to hear about their thoughts. I think this play is going to go great. Everybody's so energetic about it and just enthusiastic, so it, it all should turn out great. I think it's going to be a lot of trial and error. Plays never come out exactly how you want them to be, but I think the end product is going to be doable, and I think it's going to be worth seeing. I think it's an interesting concept, and it's going to be, it was difficult to execute that concept, but I think we're going to pull it off. I think the play is going to go pretty well, um, especially since like one of our main actors like found out he wasn't able to do it anymore, and our, his understudy stepped in, and they're actually doing pretty well for being short notice, so I think the play is going to turn out pretty well. I think the play, you know, it's only its second time being showed other than like at Fompon, and it's, it's a, I feel like it's a little risky, but, you know, but I feel like it's going to go well, so I think it's going to be successful. <laughs> And this is Randy Stringer for Cougar News. Hey, Evan, do you know about HOSA? Isn't that a biomed program? Yeah, Mitchell did a recap of HOSA week. Take it away, Mitchell. Hello, Afton. During the week of November 17th through the 21st, HOSA had its spirit week. I caught up with a member of HOSA, Amir Hasisalahovich, president of HOSA, Otis Terzik, and supervisor Tim Knox to get more on the topic. 
What does being in HOSA mean to you? Being in HOSA gives me a feeling of involvement in the future of medicine. What would you say to future students who are interested in the medical field? Uh, future students should definitely be a part of the biomedical program and HOSA because it gives you a lot of experience that you can't get anywhere else. Addis, what does being president of HOSA mean to you? It means a lot. It's really nice to have an active leadership role when it comes to getting other students involved in the medical field and letting them know what the medical field is all about. What would you say to future students who are interested in the medical field? I would say just go out there and get it, man. When it comes to medicine, it's just important to know what you want to do and get that experience. I mean, go out there, experiment, find what you like, and get that experience under your belt. Mr. Knox, what is HOSA? Health Occupation Student Associates of America, basically an extension of the biomedical curriculum that the district, as well as calendar year, cannot include for the students. Activities such as competitions, state and national, as well as guest speakers, um, giving the kids a chance to investigate further the biomedical field. Mr. Knox, what advantages can a student gain being in HOSA? Being in HOSA gives them the opportunity not only to continue building the resume in a very positive way for the medical field, it gives them a chance to compete against other medical, pre-medical, biomedical interested students around the state and country. Last, it gives them the benefit of not only shadowing, participating in fun activities, but just a way to put their name on something at the school that positively does something for not only them, the school district of Afton, but as well as their future. This is Mitchell Dooley, Cougar News. Well. Uh, have you heard about WWE coming to Afton? Wesley did a story on it. Have you guys heard of the Afton WWE Locker Room Tournament? I think they're hilarious yeah, and super fun. Awesome. Uh, well, during the football season, we'd, we'd have a lot of fun with the team. We'd have like WWE matches and stuff in the locker room right after school. And it was just great team bonding. I think they're really funny, and when we did them down in the locker room, they were really fun, and they got us all really pumped up for the games. Ben Bradrick really started it. Um, he just brought up one day, remember how we used to always watch WWE in like middle school and stuff, and how fun it was? And we just, one day just started doing it, and we, a lot of people thought it was funny, so we just kept doing it. It was fun. This is Wesley Bauckham with Cougar News, signing out. That's it from us. I'm Justine. And I'm Evan. Stay classy, Afton.